Hey everyone, Dave and Allie here, and uh, we're about to do something I've never done before. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about you. What's that? Uh, eating Guy Fieri food. Yeah, I've never done that either. Flavortown Kitchen uh, is delivering. I did not mean to cover your face, honey, by, by lifting it, it, it. It's okay. I did not mean to Mike Wazowski you with the with the Flavortown. Hello. The, with the Flavortown bag. Um, yeah, I've never had uh, any of Guy Fieri's food, but I, we are generally a pro Guy Fieri household oh, here. Oh, very much so. Um, I know in the past I've made fun of Guy Fieri uh, just because it was the cultural perspective to make fun of Guy Fieri. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I you know, sort of mocked him for being ridiculous. He's a fiery guy, fiery guy, fiery guy, guy, fiery guy, fiery. There. That sounds like a real person. That's a backstory. And then that Shane Torres bit went viral, and I was like, yeah, why are we making fun of Guy Fieri? <laughs> he goes around the country to small businesses and gives them free advertising on a national platform on a weekly basis. Advertising those small businesses could never afford themselves with his own television show. But because his hair looks like he was electrocuted while drinking Mountain Dew. <laughs> People act like we need to saw his head off and put it on the internet. He had a bunch of uh, really, I think, insightful, in-depth podcast episodes, like in 2018, where he sort of kind of talked about his philosophy of the Fieti, basically. And he just was like, yeah, no, it's it's like, I, I'm a big Anthony Bourdain fan, so I tend to be like, you know, Anthony Bourdain, cool guy, guy Fieti from dorks. And it's like, no, they're both kind of the same side of cool, but it's more, he's more, okay to be stupid as where Bourdain is like must be cool at all costs basically. Now don't get me wrong, I still think Guy Fieri is a ripe target for parody, mm -hmm. um, but less mean-spirited parody. Than, and and uh, he seems to be now the one that's bringing up the memes for, for the stuff. He's he, the creator of the memes now. Yeah, he, he, he has fully embraced his place in pop culture and uh, at least as of this recording, there haven't been any allegations that he's secretly horrible. No, so no. There are still some Guy Fieri parodies I love, like uh, Bryson Tyson from Super Ego. Oh, it's fabulous. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Driving Around Shitface. I'm your host, Bryson Tyson. We're going to take you to a place you've never been before. Why? There's grease on the wall so thick, I hear Johnny Mathis once fucked there. Uh, there were a couple of comedy bang bang sketches that... Uh, mm -hmm. That were a lot of fun. That's all the time we have for Make the Sweater Better. I am out of here. But remember, stay cool. Okay, I got to go. But also, keep cruising. Hasta la vista. <laughs> oh, oh, no. But generally, we are pro Fieri, but we've never tried his food. And it's one of those things we've talked about. If we ever do go to Florida, you know, when the world allows us to do such things again, one of the first places we often talk about hitting up first is the Chicken Guys. Yes, I, I've heard great things about Chicken Guy at Disney Springs, and uh, uh, on the Flavortown menu was the Chicken Guy classic sandwich, which I'm curious to try. As our connoisseur of the fried chicken sandwich in this household. Actually, the last big trip we took before lockdown uh, was to New York City for uh, an engagement party your aunt was throwing for us. Yeah. And there was one night in the hotel where we were just watching hours upon hours of diners, drive-ins, and dives. Yeah. So uh, it, it was honestly a very pleasant way to spend a wintry evening. <laughs> yeah, our um, go-to in the hotel room whenever we're uh, when we're, when the rare times we leave California is uh, either HGTV uh, uh, flip or flop with my mom or uh, anything dr d d triple D related. Flip or flop is uh, still, we still have more of a negative feeling towards. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's a good hate, you know? It's a joyful hate. It's like, what the fuck is happening here? We're just fascinated by that couple that seems to hate each other less now that they're divorced yeah. than they did when they were married. <laughs> this was cooked in the Buco de Beppo yes. on uh, yeah, on Harbor. Which seems to be the, the, the new place for a lot of these ghost uh, restaurants have been popping up, like Mr. Beast um, Burgers, um, uh, Taiga Chicken Bites, which we I think had a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and some other ones, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense because Buco de Beppo is not a, uh, it's not a company that thrives with the takeout model, you know, it's, it's it's family style. The whole thing is gathering around the table and breathing in each other's faces. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to me that if their business is gonna be so down, they are going to use the closed restaurant period to uh, 
rent out their resources to places that don't have buildings. Yeah. As someone whose day job, and when I say day job, I mean day side hustle out of my out of my many side hustles, the one that most reliably provides income. As someone who makes most of my income as a delivery driver, I've delivered Mr. Beast Burger from Buga de Beppo. Uh, I've delivered a couple of other uh, ghost kitchen items from Buca de Beppo. Mm -hmm. And there was a one day a while ago where I was one of at least eight delivery drivers in the uh, lobby of the mm -hmm. Buca de Beppo, all waiting for a different ghost kitchen order. Mm -hmm. That was uh, a bit of an ordeal. Mm -hmm. uh, that they, they were backed up in that kitchen. So uh, clearly the not doing good business with delivery was no longer an issue for Buca de Beppo. Mm -hmm. So preamble aside, I'm very curious to dig into what we have here. So we got the, uh, I believe this is the fries. This looks fry shaped. Mm -hmm. We got the Flavortown fries. Uh, in the in the chicken the chicken guy container, yeah. we got actually no that might be the chicken sandwich because this looks even more fry shaped. Yeah, yeah. Here with the little cartoon Fieri. See, see, he embraces his own ridiculous image, mm. and that is something to aspire to. In mine, I got the cheesy burger. Because... And I'm guessing that's this one because there's a little uh, burger with the motorcycle, kind of looking like the comedy Bang Bang logo <laughs> right there. <laughs> or hot, uh, hot rod, mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of vehicle yeah. it's on. Um, it's something that would have lived at Red Dub at one point or another, basically. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wanted to get the burger mostly because um, the infamous donkey sauce is on it. These are interesting uh, containers for sandwiches. Yeah. L l l like a, a vertical sandwich delivery system is uh, yeah. uh, uncommon. All right, with the garlic aioli the, with the donkey sauce and the garlic brioche bun things i i've been curious about and also enjoying so bon appetit good god, stuff god damn it this is good <laughs> i am curious to try a bite I normally do not care for aioli or mayo, as this one can attest to, but that is honestly pretty, pretty good. Yeah, it's solid. I will say the burger patty itself is nothing remarkable. No, no, it's a little under seasoned, which I'm not surprised by, but... There was nothing particularly wrong with it, but it's like a run-of-the-mill fast food burger. Yeah, I mean, it's also like smash burgers are just kind of designed to be basic delivery mm -hmm. services, you know? Although it's better than the last time we had a burger at the restaurant branded Smash, Smash Burger. Burger yeah. And the bites I had, the uh, the garlic was uh, subtle. We had a while ago, they were doing that garlic butter burger at Sonic, which we really liked the first time we had. And then every subsequent time, it just tasted worse and worse. Yeah. So yeah, the garlic's not as overwhelming there as it is on the Sonic one, yeah. but. Now this, this Whoa. is this is a monstrous chicken patty. This, I think this is also my breakfast tomorrow. And your lunch too, babe. Good Lord. All right, dig in. It's more of a, um, and I I am no culinary expert, so I don't really know mm -hmm. um, the terms, but it's more of a flatter chicken patty than like mm -hmm. the puffier ones you get with like the Popeye sandwich. Mm -hmm. They may have uh, butterflied the thigh and pounded out kind of similar to like doing chicken parm style so that it has a little bit more surface area. It, to put the it does have kind of a chicken parmy texture. Mm -hmm. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, I like it. I don't think it's like go out of my way for it good. Mm -hmm. The the way like I will actually drive several legs away for the Popeye sandwich. No, for sure. The slaw is pretty solid on there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like there's, it, it is an overstuffed sandwich, but nothing feels like wasted space. I have not tried Mr. Beast Burger yet, but like anytime I see the images of it, it's like mm -hmm. a bunch of random conglomerate of ingredients that, you know, technically in theory go well, but just <laughs> sort of seem to be there. I'd be curious for a deep dive into the whole ghost kitchen process how do you make sure like it's uniform across all locations when it might not even be made by the same restaurant each time you know you know this one was made at Buca de Beppo but there might be one made at like uh Gold Corral yeah or or or, or who knows what else I'm presuming 
the ghost kitchen in question provides the ingredients or at least mm-hmm. dictates where they get the ingredients from. There seems to be one central holding company that mm-hmm. a lot of these people are partnering with that had the same people that work at like Bugo de Beppo or something like that. So I think it is like decentralized at like one restaurant chain. This is sort of the, we have the raw material to make your vision a reality. Okay, so the, so they're basically all going to be with Bugo de Beppo. Mr. Beast Burger mm-hmm. isn't going to be with Bugo de Beppo in one town and mm-hmm. with Chuck E. Cheese in another town. Mm-hmm. I mean, Chuck E. Cheese's version of Ghost Kitchen is just renaming their own pizza. <laughs> Which is honestly what I thought Buka was doing at first, the first time I delivered from a Ghost Kitchen from mm-hmm. them. Because despite the fact that I am a person on YouTube, I am so bad at keeping up with what the young people are into that I was unfamiliar with Mr. Beast or Mr. Beast Burger. Mm-hmm. So when I went to deliver Mr. Beast Burger and it said inside Buca de Beppo. I was, I was like, is this like Buca de Beppo's Pasquale's? <laughs> Let's see how guy's fries are. Ooh, these are a, these are a thick fry. Ooh, thick boys. That's the kind of fry I like. A lot of seasoning. Yeah, I mean this in the best way. These are basically the Wendy's breakfast potatoes. Mm-hmm. It's like a little bit more elegant. Thank you, love. Yeah, the Wendy's breakfast potato is the only time Wendy got a fry right. I like a good crispy seasoning on a fry. I'm the freak who likes Burger King fries just because I like how they're crisply mm-hmm. seasoned. Why do you think I married you mm-hmm. for beyond multiple other reasons? I also am a big fan of them fries. I do love this puddle of like... Puddle of sauce. Here, let's get this. This pellet of sauce that's just warming like right there. You are now officially a member of the sauce squad. <laughs> Not officially, because we haven't signed up for the mailing list, but oh. oh. That was an ordeal. Now the tag of the light is all getting in the way of the lens. Oh no. God, I'm going to be bathing in grease tonight. No shower, I think it's an ordeal. <laughs> mm. So final verdict, uh, Guy Fieri is good at fast food. Yeah. I mean, it's pricey. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's fast casual, as they call. It, it comes with the name recognition mm. of the guy on the TV. But hey, it doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. Just like Guy Fieri doesn't suck. <laughs> I may or may not still do some sketches poking fun at him, but gentle fun. Mm-hmm. Besides, we all know that the real target now is Paul Hollywood, so... <laughs> I mean, with how short my hair is, if I just spray it gray, I think I can pass for Paul Hollywood. I think you can. So expect a Great British Baking Show parody... 2062. Yeah. Whenever it's actually safe to get enough friends over to uh, actually parody a show that has multiple people standing very close to each other. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed this, we can review other novelty foods, I suppose. We can go and give that Mr. Beast Burger a try. Or we can do the Taiga Bites live. We can ride the wave of a much more popular YouTuber than myself. Mm, Yes. We have so many uh, vlogs from theme park food festivals over the years that are sitting on my hard drive unedited because I'm refusing to release other theme park videos until the blitz is done as motivation for myself but uh that'll be out someday it'll be on patreon someday even sooner now that i have a computer that can actually edit quickly who knows when that stuff will be on patreon no exactly so if you like the idea of us eating food you can subscribe to the patreon at some point in the near future help dog is keep me in super yaki (laughs) t-shirts And if you don't like watching us eat food, you can still support the Patreon, but just skip those vlogs. And you'll still help su- Doggins keep me in Super Yaki t-shirts. And you can listen to our podcast, which is a lot of fun and only sometimes about food. And sometimes my Super Yaki t-shirts. All right, I did a call to action. That's the thing you're supposed to do at the end of a YouTube video, right? Like, share, subscribe. Smash that like button. Meh. Annihilate that subscribe button. <laughs> exterminates that like button (laughs) and click the bell or whatever Mm -hmm. i can't keep up by the time i'm done editing this the whole interface will change anyway it doesn't matter just support the patreon that's uh that for the foreseeable future support the patreon is going to be an important part of the call to action and now let's send this off to your editor oreo (laughs) my editor the cat (laughs) who walks across the keyboard (laughs) Should we exploit our roommate's cat for YouTube clicks? Because uh, cat videos tend to do better than my shit does. Hell yeah, let's do it. You know me, I like any reason to potentially get some monetary gain. We should do it on your channel that isn't banned for AdSense just yet because it doesn't have enough subscribers yet. Uh, well, uh, the, the thing that's banned for AdSense is my social security number, so. Oh, unfortunate. <laughs>
Yeah, so. So why don't we get the LLC started so we can? Because I looked how expensive it is to uh, start an LLC and uh, gonna wait until there's actually a return on investment, likely. You want me to put my security, social security number in there so we can make it work out? I think right now my YouTube channel is so tied to my uh, uh, band AdSense account that I cannot extract the two. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm doing the call to action to support the Patreon for more. The podcast is basically this, where we just talk about stuff we don't quite understand. Exactly. At home with the Doggins is at the three dollar tier. Hear us talk about Criterion films that you don't care about. Yes, we do a sub series where we talk about Criterion films. We do a, a sub series where we relitigate the embarrassing old crap I made in high school, and you can also see the embarrassing old crap I made in high school on the Patreon at just the two dollar level. Uh, we do a sub series where we barely remember things, <laughs> and uh, we also just do episodes about random stuff. And if you, if 10,000 of you donate a dollar to the podcast, we will make Dave wear a funny hat. <laughs> Do we own any funny hats? I can acquire some very easily. I'm sure we can. <laughs> if we're getting $10,000, we can afford a funny hat. <laughs> Just barely after we pay off the rest of our bills, True. but... <laughs> um, and even if you pledge at just the $1 level, you get access to the Patreon-exclusive live streams. They're actually pretty fun. I did one this past month as we're filming this where I live streamed my filming process for the next obsession of the moment. Yeah, it was a great time. I, I am not only his wife, but I am also a member of the Patreon. And it, it is fun when work is happening and there is no one there to just watch my husband live stream from here. Because I could think, ah, I could be in the room next door if I had the opportunity to do so. <laughs> playing Animal Crossing. If 20,000 of you join at the $1 level, I will make Dave play Animal Crossing. It probably won't take that much. I, I, just, I just don't need another thing to get addicted to. <laughs> I, to this day, have not played a single second of World of Warcraft because I knew if I played one, it would be all downhill from there. And I feel like Animal Crossing will have a similar effect on me. It, it, it has on me, that's for certain. I had to delete that stupid Solitaire app off my phone because I got addicted to frickin' Solitaire. <laughs> Do you want to show the people the challenge coin that you got from them? <laughs> Not particularly. <laughs> we don't. We don't need to give that company uh, free publicity no. because it was a solitaire app where you could gamble real money, and it was probably a very exploitative company. Let's mm -hmm. be real. Let's be real. Um, Anything that has their end name with a Z, you know, there's a problem there. So. <laughs> anyway, that's enough plugging the Patreon. We'll just plug the Guy Theory food again because uh, it's good. Oh, and our really cool uh, tiki glasses that we got uh, a while ago. Yes, these Haunted Mansion inspired tiki glasses. I'll put the link down below. He's done stuff for the Knott's Berry Farm Arts show like every year. So uh, he's a good artist and these are not super expensive. So highly recommend. Here's a Leota expired, not expired. <laughs> Here's a Leota inspired tiki princess character. Here's hitchhiking ghost inspired tiki's. Uh, so on and so forth. Yeah, um, possibly questionably appropriative, but uh, a fun mashup. We're good at Dave's tiki town. <laughs> All right, until next time, this is Dave and Allie signing off. Later days, y'all. Later days.